Okay, um, welcome to the class everybody again. It's lesson five. So last week we were um, drawing from some people from different cultures. And if you remember, I suggested using a grid to help you draw that out accurately. So you didn't have to worry about, um, you know, getting things in the right place. So you could take that time to get all of the um, image in the right place so that you could paint it. The idea as well is that we're using an underpainting, first of all, using a limited color palette. And I was using um, Burnt Umber and Ultramarine and some white mainly to do that, um, which I've just realized I need to get, get out in a few minutes. Um, so we're using those things to help do the underpainting. And then we're applying some color um, in thin layers back over the top of the image in order to um, add a little bit more of the depth and richness of the colour scheme and things or the colour skin. Um, we also looked at an artist as well uh, who we'll have another look at. I brought in some more examples to put on the screen uh, to show you in a few minutes. Um, and the idea uh, with that artist was that there's lots of collaging going on in the background to create um, different textures and uh, more interest but the other idea of course was to add some patterns in which we haven't quite got to uh, just yet but we can get to as we uh, progress through the picture all right so we'll go over to the uh, the wall as usual so um, on the website I've put these for you so you can have a look at these uh, for helping you to mix um, some different skin tones uh, to go on your figures or to go on your portraits. Um, so the first, the first, well, you can look at them individually, but um, we've got different color schemes and different um, sets of colors to help you add um, those together. It says watercolor at the top, but really, you know, the the, the pigments and things you can use to help you uh, mix the colors are all there. So, and we are using uh, much. Um, thinner layers of colour over the top of your image, over the top of the underpainting to help you bring out those colours a little bit more. Okay, so um, on here you can see some of the paler skins. We've got some of the colours that you're familiar with already, so one of them being ultramarine here, and then um, uh, and then some different mixes of those with, um, with the colour at the top here. So we've got a burnt sienna. So if you mix a burnt sienna in with these colours, you'll get these different tones that, that you can then layer over the top of um, the underpainting that you've got already. Okay, so um, I'll be doing that. I was doing a bit of that last week, to be honest with you, because um, I knew that I wouldn't cover the whole of the portrait, and I haven't done much more of it since uh, last lesson. I've done the other eye. Um, so we'll be able to have a look at that together um, as well. Um, so those are all on the website. For you so you can download those to get um, a closer look I put those on um, earlier today realizing that I, I meant to talk a bit more about um, color schemes and so forth um, so they're all on there for you to have a look at um, depending on what colors you've got um, you'll be able to do um, most of those or some of those um, but I'll talk a little bit more as we progress or as you ask me um, about which colors to use to create different skin tones. We might come back to this screen um, to have a look at some of those. Okay, um, so um, you'll remember this. I've just already mentioned that today um, or this evening. Um, so we've got all of these different um, or these different phases of the painting. So the first one being the main outline of the picture. The next one being the underpainting, which almost is very monochromatic. So it looks virtually black and white, although um, it is kind of a brown and a white, as I mentioned earlier. So you've got these bluey colors in there. You can see those. And you've also got these um, burnt umbers for the darker tones. But as I've mentioned before, to get the really dark tones, you can add burnt umber and ultramarine together to create those deeper um, shadowy tones as I've been doing on my portrait of this girl who's obviously got um, darker skin in this case but then the next stage after you've got the main tones and shadows is to start working back over the top um, with some skin tones 
So, and you can, again, you can use thinner layers of color to achieve um, these effects as well. Okay, um, but it depends on what sort of picture you're working on. So I can help individually with that, but um, I suggest having a look first of all at some of those uh, color palettes that I mentioned that are on the website as well. All right, um, so let's close that one off. Now, one of the things that I said that I really wanted to do today as well was to um, have a look at some of the collage sort of techniques. And um, in my email, I mentioned um, collecting some um, things that you might use to collage into the background of your picture. Um, I don't know if one of these is what you meant, Sheila. Um, it is, I think it is, yes. Yes, is it the middle one there? This, um, let me just... It's not, there, it's not there at the moment, but it was there. Oh, okay. Is it? Is it? Hang on. Uh, I'm just trying to get a hold of one. So I've got that one. Uh, this is the one that I was showing last week so that everyone could see. Um, let me see if I can get that one a bit bigger. Uh, there you go. Right. So on this one, we can see, and this is a better photograph than the one I showed last week. Um, so um, it's Stephanie Ledoux is the artist and you can see various things in the background here which might suggest something about the background of the person although not necessarily it's also there to create decorative elements and texture and then look there's um, painted spots on here which um, you could do with by cutting out um, a sponge and printing them so that's something I hadn't thought of so I could do that perhaps and then I've got bits of um, bags in there as well which i'll show you as well I, i've used a bit of a primark bag and some old maps but you can also use uh, newspaper uh, to create your textures and things as well or your back backdrops in there and then paint back into those so as you can see she's created this background um, and she probably did it over the whole sheet to be honest with you or over the whole canvas and then painted back around the edges so there's this nice yellow highlighting her and also complementing her and then you've got these areas of uh, it looks like white paper as opposed to paint just there but um, you can build up these layers and make quite an interesting piece and um, uh, I mentioned this as well last week that she's also got uh, Stephanie's also added some real jewelry onto the portrait itself like these um, beautiful earrings as well which I'm assuming um, I don't know but I'm assuming she made two okay so um, I'll put that one in a minute I'll put that one onto the next page where we're doing our work this evening in fact I've got a copy of it anyway on my desk so I'll copy that and I'll put it in there in a few minutes um, but there's uh, there are some more if you're thinking oh I'd like to have a closer look at some of these in my own time then these ones um, uh, very similar um, she's also used um, a stencil for lettering down the side as well um, you can see Ethiopia written down the side there um, and in some cases the paint the portrait itself is has just been done either with a color pencil or something obviously we've been doing uh, a bit of painting so there's a lot of learning going on tonight actually we've got skin colors we've got layering we've got collage and um, perhaps even stenciling or um, printing uh, shapes and patterns onto a picture as well. Um, the other thing you could do, of course, um, and it might be going on here in the corner of this one, is there's some, uh, it could be a penny or something or, or a coin from the country. Um, and there's a medal down there. So there's various bits of imagery being placed in there as well, which could also have been collected or printed off and uh, used to help enhance this um, these artworks so as you know I'm doing uh, the girl that I've got up here in the corner um, and I'll show you how far I've got with it so far I've just done a little bit more uh, with the collage so hopefully you can have a look at that yay it's working woohoo right <laughs> <laughs> oh dear anyway um, yes, so we've got um, the portrait that I've been working on. There's still a lot of work to, to do on things like the nose and that, but I've made a good start on there. Um, and I did start, as I mentioned last week, I did start to apply some different tones of colour over the top. Um, so I've got um, 
the main thing I started with was these two. So if you remember, I mentioned mixing ultramarine and burnt umber together will give you the dark tones, which I've got here. It doesn't necessarily mean, as you saw last week, that those those tones are going to stay dark if you if you watered them down. So you're going to get some of the greens coming back through um, coming back through the tones that you put on. But that can also add to the uh, the depth and the richness of the picture. Um, I used sap green for my main background, um, but I did mention um, that, and somebody else has just said they're creating their background at the moment, so we've got this uh, yellow ochre is always a really nice one I find to use as a background, but I decided to do something a little bit different. And then to enhance the skin tones, so on the girl we have got um, some warmer colours around the sort of forehead, here, look so I've been using a little bit of um, burnt sienna mixed in with some of my color to start bringing some of those skin tones through as well so I haven't done the whole of the underpainting because I wanted to get onto this bit so that I could show you that uh, last week um, and then you might also find that you put down some highlights and they look great to start with but then you think, oh, I still need to be a bit brighter. And you go back and you apply a little bit more. Um, and it can be quite a long process, but it's also a really um, fun one because you can see the portrait uh, gradually emerging out of the uh, piece of paper that you're working on. Um, a lot of most of these um, uh, squares and things that you can see on here are also um, going to gradually disappear as I paint over there so I wouldn't worry unduly about all of the, um, the squares if you've drawn squares all the squares you've got on there because they will go um, as you paint it okay and I'll, I'll try and do as much as I can on this tonight so you can see how it starts to materialize um, on here on the, um, the face paint that she's got on I was using again a burnt sienna and um, but what I'm going to do once I put that on is I'm going to start adding on some uh, stronger colors um, maybe some cadmium red mixed in with this burnt sienna to brighten it up and uh, some highlights using white um, providing I get to that stage of course all right uh, and then uh, so I've got this old Primark bag that I've used <laughs> Because the, the main reason I chose it was uh, because of the colour. And on Stephanie Ledoux's work, we saw some of those um, browns in there where she'd put some printed material on. But I really liked um, the letters and things. So I thought I'd use the letters to help me decorate the background here. Um, I've had these old maps. These are English maps, okay? I haven't got any uh, African maps, but um, I have. Um, use these mats and, and, and cut them up and collage them. Now if you've only got um, the best glue to use is actually um, PVA really because PVA will um, will glue very well the papery surface um, whereas if you've only got a Prit stick Prit stick is really just for tacking things down so it may come away eventually um, but you can give it a go if you've only got that. Um, and then I've got the Times as well, a really old copy of the Times from, oh my gosh, it is old, it's from 2021. Um, I've had it in my collage bag for a long time. Um, so things like words are really nice to use, as you saw on Stephanie Ledoux's work. Um, this sort of thing's right up my street, really, because I, as you know, I really love collage, and so... This brings in some of my other practice as an artist. Um, and then what I tend to do, and you can do bigger areas if you want to do to do that, what I tend to do is tear the newspaper up into smaller bits and then brush back over the top. So I apply the glue first and then put the newspaper, fit the newspaper in or whatever you're using and brush it over the top. And what I intend to do later is actually start um, adding some colour back over this and it will dry into a nice hard surface as well 
So it's quite nice to work in with different media actually. You can work into it with oil pastels or um, uh, where else could you work into it with? Um, colour pencils, all, all sorts of things like that. So there's lots to play around with and you know I'm going to give us time to, to really explore this. So I'll try out some different media on this one as we work through it. Okay. Um, so remember, oil um, acrylics dry quite quickly, so um, you'll need to just add a little bit of water to it if you want to keep it flowing. If you want it to dry quicker, then obviously just leave it, and if you're in a warmish kind of room, it'll dry really nicely, and you'll be able to work on over the top of it within minutes. As I said last week, I often just put this, I'll often just put it over on the heater next to me for a minute or two, and it'll dry up quite nicely. So as you can see, I've just skipped forward a little bit there because I was helping a lot of people with um, their work during that session there. Um, so I'm using a lot of the Burnt Umber and Ultramarine to add in the shadows, but then also using, <coughs> excuse me, using um, some white to put in the highlights. I use some Venetian Red on the lips as well um, because there's a nice little bit of colour in there. I think I did dip into uh, one or two other colours, such as um, a little bit of cadmium red, just to give that uh, those lips a little bit more warmth just underneath there. Um, but one of the things I really enjoyed about um, painting this was uh, continuously layering thin layers of colour back over the top of each other, and also noticing some of these gorgeous uh, sort of bluey um, tints in the highlights on the soft skin or the smooth skin uh, around the um, sort of just underneath the nose there on the top lip around the uh, right hand side of the face as we look at it as well so um, it was really enjoyable um, to look at these colors and to layer them on top of each other i did try to work as quickly as i possibly could for this um, because i did want to spend a bit more time on the collage today um, but that didn't happen, um, partly because I was so uh, absorbed in painting the, the colour on the face, as I just explained. Um, so here I'm just um, mapping in one little area at a time. I switched to a slightly thicker brush, a filbert brush, um, at that point, just so that I could um, add colour on a larger area of the forehead there. As you can see, you can see through the colour that I've applied on the um, on the top of the head there. Um, as I mentioned, it was it's it is thin layers of colour, but then I bring in more layers back over the top, and so it does become um, more opaque in um, different places on there as well. There you see, I'm going back in with some more highlights, and I've added more of the ultramarine into that. Um, there are other colours that I could apply that because I think I feel that it is more more of a sort of warmer blue up there. So I can go back to that a little bit later, perhaps. Um, and and then I I went back and I started to add some more pure um, white highlights onto the, around the eyes and the nose and the lips and things, and that really kind of brought um, those features forward quite significantly. Um, now that's not to say that they can stay like that because I can actually come back to it a little bit later on and um, soften some of those highlights and then maybe just tweak them again slightly with the white. Um, just here um, I, I got hold of um, some orange paint from the um, from my uh, set of paints that I've got there uh, which is the System 3 paints and I started to mix those with some um, some of the uh, reds that I've been using and uh, using a bit of white to add highlights. Now the other thing, once I've gone round all of the um, all of the face paint, I can then start to again use some of that burnt umber and ultramarine to uh, add a bit of tone back over the top uh, and make that shadow that comes across the side of the face paint there. 
as you can probably hear I've got a little bit of a cold coming on at the moment so apologize for that so one of the things I'm really looking forward to is getting stuck in with the um, the jewelry and the headdress a little bit later to bring those um, bring those out as well and then we can start applying those backgrounds like Stephanie uh, Ledoux uh, often does in her work. So you can see just there I added some tonal work but then went back over with the white on top. Um, you can work either way um, because as I've explained the paint will dry very well very quickly which enables you to keep adding uh, layers of paint over the top of each other in quite quick su succession because unlike oil it will dry very quickly. So quite pleased with the overall effect of this. Um, I'm looking forward to trying out a bit of the jewellery perhaps in tomorrow's um, live art lesson at Rawns. <clears throat> Uh, and then I talked a little bit about how I started to bring in more of a uh, like purpley colour. So I've used some, um, I think it was process blue and uh, some ro uh, another red, a more pinky red. Mix those together to make a, a nice strong purple and then added some white and a touch of the brown so that we start to get some of these lovely purpley tints in the painting as well. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this and uh, perhaps tempted to try it out yourself. Um, but um, we'll have another go um, at it in next, next week's lesson, which is after half term. So next week we don't actually have a lesson, we've got one the week after. Um, so I hope you've all enjoyed that. and. Um, uh, don't forget to keep posting your work on our, our Facebook page as well because it's really inspiring for me as well to see how um, you're all getting along with uh, your work too. Um, thanks very much and have a lovely week.